11 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you from my yarn store called Paper Crane Yarns. We're located in Central Alabama, USA. I am a yarn dyer and as I mentioned, I own a yarn store so I carry my selection of hand dyed yarns like you see behind me and I have lots of other brands that I carry and partner with, um, small artists, big companies. Yeah, that's a little bit about my shop. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, it's been a while, of course, since I was able to record. My life doesn't allow me to sit down and do this very often. Today is July 1st, 2023, and it is nearly 100 degrees outside, which is amazing. It's 7 in the morning. Um, hopefully you can tell the sarcasm there because it's awful. And I'm sitting in front of my windows in my shop um, with it being so early in the morning. You know the sun is coming up and so the lighting that's coming in is definitely a bit harsh I'm trying to sit back out of it but if I happen to come forward and look like Phantom of the Opera I apologize I'm trying to stay out of it because it is very glaring so I have a couple of hours until my shop opens so I thought I would try to sneak away early come here a bit early and record and then open my shop for the day um, Joining me is M Mufasa, my adorable cow mug from Kata Ceramics. I love him. I use him every day. So I figured today I would just jump straight into my knitting. <laughs> sometimes I do that, sometimes I ramble for a bit. So the structure of today's episode is going to be um, my finished objects, then works in progress, then things I've been that I've recently purchased. And then I thought if I've got some time, I will be a little chatty and save that for the end. So if you're just here for the knitting, um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk about my finished objects. So if this is not your first time here with me, then you have seen kind of the saga of my La Prairie. And um, if this is your first time finding my channel, this project has been a beautiful monster. <laughs> um, so this is La Prairie by Hohi Locatelli, one of my favorite designers. And she released this pattern, I want to say February or so. I cast it on March 2nd. I finished it June 9th of 2023. Anyway, this did take me quite a long time. Um, garments for me are usually very quick. Um, the only thing that usually takes me a while to knit is like a Stephen West shawl for obvious reasons. And then this apparently, this was a lot. So this has, uh, this is a five color fade. It has bobbles all over and I'll, I'll lean in soon to show you the texture of the cardigan, but it's an all over textured cardigan as well. The sleeves have the pattern too, um, that go down the very center and then the rest of it is all purling. So yeah, this one was a lot of work. Um, I knit this with my friend Tammy, who comes to my, my knit groups on Saturdays. Um, she is just about done with hers. Um, it was really fun to have somebody to commiserate on a on this pattern with. And um, she and I have actually knit two sweaters together. So we also did the Herbalist Swan Show by Olga Pitano together um, over the fall and winter. And that was a lot of fun. So I don't know um, what our third sweater, our matching sweaters will be, but... Tammy, I don't think, watches my YouTube videos, but um, I'm going to let her know today, if I see her, that we have to go ahead and pick our third sweater, because clearly we have to keep this friendship sweater trend going. <laughs> okay, so I knit the size 2, if I didn't mention that. Um, the needles I used were slightly adjusted from Hohe's recommended needle, and that wasn't because of a gauge swatch or anything, because of course I didn't do a gauge swatch, uh, but she recommended a three millimeter needle. I think that's correct. And I actually, at the time, didn't have a three millimeter on hand. So I just cast on with a 2.75 millimeter, um, which was a bit risky to go down, you know, a needle size. And um, I did the whole body on that and it worked out. So I'm, I'm glad that I went with that. All It's all good. The sleeves, you're supposed to also use the three millimeter. And I actually went up to a 3.25 millimeter so that I could have maybe a little bit of extra room. Um, and you can see they're still fitted, but I think it's perfect. And maybe using a three millimeter wouldn't have made a huge difference, but 
I'm glad that I went with what I went with. We'll talk about the yarns and then I'll stand up and show you the sweater. So this was a fade that I just put together myself with some yarns I had in my stash mostly and then color five gave me a lot of trouble so I did end up having to buy yarn for that. We'll get to that. So this is color one. Yeah, so this is color one. This is Fiori by La Bien Aimee and um, it's just a light pearly gray with lots of undyed like white sections and then a f very few tiny pink and yellow speckles. So that was my color one and it's up here at the shoulder and the top of the sleeve. And then color two is also by La Bien Aimee and this is Tangiopia. And this one is um, a bright, vibrant orange and pink with some light and dark grays. So this is a variegated and I really loved this one. Um, so I thought that these would be a great transition and I have a good bit of color one left, especially when compared to color two. I haven't weighed these. I'm, pr I'm going to probably do that today. So yeah, color one and color two. And then color three, this is Golden Hour by Biddy Knits, who is Brooke. And this one has some of those pink and orange um, colors, but it starts to introduce some blue and there's even some like plummy purples. colors one through three. So I was really happy with this fade part that I built. And then my color four, this is a Lambstrings colorway. So Summer Goth by Lambstrings, my color four. This is like a, just a milky, almost sea foam kind of blue. So um, I knew it was kind of taking a big turn from the top of the sweater, um, but I really wanted something kind of bold and I like a variety of colors in my palette um, and I really struggled with picking the perfect palette because picking five yarns sounds like a lot of freedom but when you're when you know you're gonna spend a long time on a project at least for me I wanted it to be the perfect yarns for each each one so it was a hard decision but that was my color four and then color five this is where the kind of the saga comes in my last episode I had actually started on color five and I while editing the video, um, or maybe even before, I had al already ripped out color five. Um, my color five was going to be this, which is my blue Totoro colorway. This is one of my hand dyed yarns. It's a mess now. But yeah, I had knit a good bit of this and I had talked in my episode about being really unsure. I loved the thought of having this teal color with all these oranges. I thought this would be a lot of fun, but because it's a solid, a mostly solid colorway, um, I was worried that when I striped it in, it would be jarring, um, and it was. So if you saw my last episode, you kind of got to see the big stripe, the bold stripes, and I thought for a fade, it, it didn't really work. Um, so I ripped it out, and that was not fun because initially I spent a long time tinking back stitch by stitch, and these are all crossed stitches and bobbles and it's very textured. So I tinked back each one. Again, not fun. Um, and then eventually I, I thought, you know, I don't have anything to lose. I'm just gonna lay this out on my bed and take off the needles and just rip all the yarn out and then go back through with the last color four row and pick up each stitch. And that's what I did and it worked out. So um, I saved myself probably a couple of hours of work doing that. <laughs> so yeah, that was the story of my initial color five. So then I ended up going with this one and this is Will-O-Wisp by Lambstrings. Um, I ordered this from her website. I figured I would go with the same dyer as my color four because I've seen her blues before and um, I thought this colorway was pretty much this colorway, just darker. So I knew that I couldn't go wrong. I ordered actually two colors that day. Um, the other one was Camp Crystal Lake but it was on her merino single space. That's all she had it on. And I was thinking I really wanted to use that one, but the rest of these yarns were all sock, so merino nylon. Um, and I love merino singles. I'm not afraid to put it in a sweater, but I didn't really want to have the bottom of the sweater be a different base, just in case, you know. So I ended up going with that one, and I'm glad that I did. So that's my La Prairie. I'm going to stand up and show you. Um, the sun is probably going to cause kind of an issue, but for all of my projects, I should be able to put, like, a picture up here somewhere so you can kind of see it in um, 
better lighting. kind of see that. I really am sorry about the lighting, but this is the only time that I have available to me to record anytime soon, so I thought better a video than no video. Um, so yeah, that's my little prairie. Um, I'll have project notes uh, or links to things down below, but if you have any specific questions, be sure to let me know. Um, I mentioned last time or maybe the time before that Hohi uses a bobble technique that I had never seen before, and I feel like the bobbles on this are the most beautiful and standout baubles I've ever seen. Um, I would like to share that with you guys so that you can have it for your reference, but I don't know. I, I need, I'll go ahead and finally look into this. I'm not sure if that was like her specific bobble pattern or if it's one that you can find available. If I can find it, it's a paid pattern, of course, so I don't want to give away like the recipe um, if you haven't purchased the pattern, but I'll see if it does exist anywhere else on the internet. And if it does, I will be sure to also share that so that you can get the bobble pattern if you don't feel like, if you don't want to buy this pattern. Okay, let's move on to another finished object. Um, I actually have two test knits to show you, so we'll do those and then I'll show you my, my um, finished object for my husband. So finished object number two. This is the Sleeve Vibes test knit for Sashiko Bergen. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, but she was one of the co-authors of Moon and Turtle, which is a, a pattern book that came out last year or the year before. I don't remember, but she wrote it with her sister. I think they're twins. Um, yeah, I'm so excited about this one. She put out a test knitting call maybe two weeks ago or so, three weeks maybe, and I applied right away because I, I knew that this was something... I would totally wear. I have stuff like this kind of that store bought. Um, so I thought how cool would that be to make one for myself and get to make it out of like my hand dyed yarn and it's a special base. Um, yeah. So this is my sleeve vibes test knit. I think the pattern is coming out middle of July. Um, so make sure that you follow Sashiko um, on Instagram. Of course, I'll have her information below. But if you want to knit one of these when the pattern comes out, you totally should. I plan on making more. Um, yeah, and um, so it's called Sleeve Vibes. It's just sleeves. So it's just sleeves and there's, of course, um, uh, like a neck and it goes all the way around. Um, this is my hand dyed yarn on a cashmere merino silk base. It's a fingering weight yarn. Yeah, to talk a little bit about the, the test knitting process, um, there's quite a few short rows in this pattern. I made the size one. I have a 32 inch upper bust circumference and this pattern goes on your upper bust uh, circumference. Plus you want to take into account your arm, your upper arm circumference because, um, you know, it, this is meant to have zero ease. So no positive ease, maybe a little bit of negative ease, but it's supposed to be a fitted garment. Um, it's got raglan shaping and again, it goes off of your upper bust measurement. So if you're somebody who has, like I have a 32 inch upper bust measurement, but I have, I'm breastfeeding, I have a daughter. I have a 35 inch bust circumference currently. And so I was glad to, I was glad she listed the measurement for this in the upper bust. Yeah, there's a lot of short rows because you're, you are establishing the shaping of like your kind of neckline, the front panel and then the back panel um, before you do your sleeves. So the sleeves are last. Um, there's a lot of shaping that goes into this. So the short rows, I actually, <laughs> that was the, that was fun. And I've gotten much better at short rows. I, I would say there's no technique now, as far as techniques I've tried, like intarsia, color work, short rows that I don't love or don't want to do. I do. I love them. I love short rows. I think they're a lot of fun now, but I was for some reason, and it's probably because I was in the car when I was working on mine, but I kept messing up. So I had to rip this out three times before I got it right. And it's really not a lot of knitting. So, um, it didn't feel that sad to me. This is only a 72 gram project. And, and you know, some of that's the sleeves, actually the part that doesn't. So before the sleeves, it weighed 40 grams. So I was surprised 
that the sleeves combined were less was less of the yarn than the front and back panel that really surprised me but anyway so I had to redo the short rows three times so I the first time I just ripped it all the way out and started from the beginning the second time I tried to rip back but it was too complicated for me at that moment so then I ripped it out again the third time I realized the mistake that I had made um so then I was able to rip back but I didn't have to rip it out all the way so that was when I realized okay I understand now what I keep doing wrong I can't even really express now what it was um I don't remember because I did it so many times that I really memorized how to do it but I will say if you knit this pattern she has a really helpful note under the short row instructions like all the numbers that you need for your size there's a note that if I had been diligent I would have looked at that first because it tells you how many sets of like wrapped stitches that you should have um, because this uses wrap and turns you could use German short rows if you wanted to I just stuck with the wrap and turns since that was what she recommended um, anyway she tells you how many for your size of the two you know the clusters of stitches you should have if I had read that first I wouldn't have kept getting confused about where I was or what I still had left so if you knit this be sure to look at that if you're having trouble um, because then you'll be able to really visualize where you are and what you have and you probably won't have the same issue that I did but you know that is part of the test knitting process that is to be expected um, that's that kind of feedback like maybe I could suggest to her not that she needs to do this but maybe I could suggest that she moves that up above the actual numbers to maybe say like hey this is what you should look out for or maybe even a note that you should see the note below um, because that was maybe the most helpful information in the pattern yeah so anyway sleeve vibes it's super cute um, I feel like there's so many ways to style this I was picturing like a silk top like this um, like a sleeveless silk top and some maybe high-waisted jeans the Sun doesn't want to cooperate with me showing you this because my skin is reflecting all of the light so it's it's like blurring everything but I'll just have hopefully put up a picture for you to see the back of it but yeah that's finished object number two um this probably took after I was, after I had already ripped it out a couple times um, and redid it, I think the last time that I knit it, it probably took a week to get done. Again, 72 grams of yarn. That's nothing. Like this is basically like knitting a pair of socks. Um, so if you have a special skein of yarn in your stash and maybe you don't want to wear socks, maybe you want to show it off, this would be a fun project. It's basically socks for your arms. <laughs> so that's sleeve vibes. I'm going to show you my next test knit now and this is something super amazing but also a little bit sad i got to i had the pleasure of <laughs> test knitting for mary hunt who um does a lot of really amazing color work patterns um cowls sweaters she is the designer of the fossil frenzy tee there's an adult and a child size version of that um she has cowls with like bigfoot and um, I think it was a fossil frenzy cowl and anyway super amazing designer I'm so glad to have gotten to test knit for her um, this has been the most fun test knit I've done because she she had a lot of test knitters um, I think it's awesome that she allowed so many people to test for her and so she created a couple of Instagram chat groups for us to um, hang out with each other basically and share um, pictures and feedback about our test knit but also there's just been lots of like adjacent dinosaur conversations um if i haven't said yet i got to test knit the stegosaurus the stego sweater um so let's let me show you the yarn that i used is a kit from yarnaceous fibers who is my favorite dyer and um it's just incredible <laughs> So the, the green is Stegosaurus and the variegated creamy color with like the green and gray um, variegation is, I think it's, I believe in dinos. I, for whatever reason, got rid of my yarn bands 
at some point early on. But the kits are available on her website. And yeah, it's so, so beautiful. This is a DK weight pattern. Um, so in my opinion, it knits up really quickly. Her DK weight yarn is very, this is the Bronto DK. It's very soft. I think because there's a, it's, it's, I think it's a 75, 25 Merino nylon DK and it's just an extra soft yarn. Um, if I'm, if I, I, I'm pretty sure it has nylon. I'll correct myself on the screen if that's not true, but yeah, beautiful. Amazing. I love it. Look how beautiful. I just, I could cry. I love this so much. So there's lots of, there's, um, it's, there's a lot of color work in this. This is a top down, um, circular yoke sweater. And again, I, I test knit this. So the pattern's not out yet, but it should be out probably the first week of August. Um, I think she pushed back the date slightly. So I think it's the first week of August, but make sure you follow Mary Hunt. Um, and I'll also remind you when the pattern's coming out. Um, so yeah, there's color work all around the yoke. There's color work on the sleeves. Of course, it's circular yoke, so it goes onto the back. There's some short row shaping here at the neck and um, color work down here before the ribbing. So, absolutely stunning. Now, my, the, the sad part about this test knit, I chose to test knit the size three, which was a small. This She has a lot of sizes available in this pattern, which is amazing. Um, so I knit the size three, which is small. That is a 38 inch bust circumference sweater. Um, and that is like total, total, that is with the ease. So that's why it's a small and not like a medium because that is with the intended ease, which I, I don't have it in front of me, but I, I would assume that's somewhere between three and six inches of intended ease. And because my bust circumference right now, um, well, it used to be a 34, but with breastfeeding, most days it's a 35. Um, so I thought I would knit the 38 to get some ease. But like I mentioned with my other test knit, my upper bust circumference is a 32. And my waist is, I don't know, I wear a 27 in jeans. Um, so there's a lot of like difference between my proportions. Um, so... I just picked the sweater size based on my bust circumference, thinking that would be best for me. Uh, I got Gage with her recommended needles, which kind of taught me something about myself because she says that she's a really tight knitter. With the, her needle size, I actually got the same exact gauge, row and stitch gauge. I was kind of amazed by that. Unfortunately, um, even though I got Gage and the measurements are to a T, to a T, what she says in the in her chart. Um, this is way too big for me. And I even took off five inches of the body. I checked with her. I was, I kind of was like, I think this is going to be too long. Um, so I took five inches off of the body. Um, I did adjust the sleeves, which I'll talk about, but the problem. So if it was just positive ease, I could wear it. But the problem is that the yoke, which is a nine inch depth from the center front. Apparently that is way too long for me and I'll try it on and show you, but I have a lot of extra fabric. I think it hangs down probably here under my underarm. So it's, it's just too big. Um, I'll put it on and show you now. <laughs> I'm really glad I just paused because I forgot about the wool and folk tickets. I wanted to get the early bird tickets to save like $20. So I, I just bought my wool and folk tickets. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I mentioned in my last episode, I am going to Rhinebeck this year again, which is very exciting. I can't wait. Um, and I'm going to wool and folk. So I just got my tickets. Yay. <laughs> okay. So my stego sweater. So you could kind of see when I was standing up or even right now when I do this, um, it's really big on me. Uh, when I, so when I bring it up, 
it's super cute. And then see, like when it's up like this, the body is perfect um, to me. I mean, there's the ease built in, of course, but this part looks really good. So the problem is there is this much extra fabric here up at either at the top or like, look how much that shifts. And some of you might think this is great and would wear this and this is what you would go for. Um, but for me, this is not, this is not exactly what I'm going for. Um, again, I wouldn't mind the ease at all if the underarm came up a little bit higher. So the yoke depth is just too great for my body. Um, I'm only, I, I'm like 5'4 or 5'5. Five five, I'm not sure. Somewhere <laughs> between those numbers. So I'm not a short person. I'm a very average size Persian. <laughs> person, not Persian. <laughs> ah, I'm excited about the wool and folk tickets. <laughs> I'm a very average height person. Um, so I don't really know what the deal is um, with that, but her pattern is correct. Again, I checked all the measurements, so there's no issue there with her pattern if you get gauge. Um, this just wasn't the right size for me, and I kind of had a feeling the whole time I was knitting it that it was going to be too big. So I probably should have ripped it out early on and knit the size too. Um, but you know, it's like now that I'm seeing it kind of in action, I don't think I mind that it's big. So I like it, but it's just not what I was hoping. I am going to knit a second one pretty much right away. I'm going to go ahead and cast it on. Um, actually, I've got the yarn, so I'll show you what it's going to look like. It's much different from this. I am, of course, disappointed though, because I really loved this yarn. I don't have anything like this color palette wise in my wardrobe. Um, I don't know. So I'm really debating on if I'm going to keep this for myself and just wear it, you know, as a comfy oversized sweater. Like maybe I go hiking or it's really cold out or I want to stay at home or just do something kind of cozy. I'm kind of talking myself into it because I really, really love it. The yarn especially. Anyway, my second one, I'm going to knit the size two more than likely. It's just weird to think about going down only one size when there's so much space here. But I think with sizes one and two, she actually has you separate for the sleeves much, much earlier than the rest of the sizes. So I think if you were to knit the size three for this, because I don't want to talk you out of knitting this, you should absolutely knit this. If you are like me and want to knit the size three, but are worried about this, just separate for the sleeves earlier. Um, maybe separate when sizes one and two separate and then just carry on with the rest of it. Um, that's something I probably, if I had realized what I, how, how long my yoke depth was, that's what I would have done. Anyway, this is going to be my next one um, in a size two, which is an extra small. Um, I'm really excited to get started on this. These are my hand dyed yarns. Um, my main color is going to be Neutrino, which is super fun. <laughs> I've been wanting to make something out of this since I dyed it. Um, the sun really is not cooperating with me. But then my Stegosaurus color is going to be my blue velvet. So this is a much different sweater than the one I have on. So Neutrino and blue velvet. So that'll be a lot of fun, I think. I'm really excited to cast this on and knit this again. I, I had so much fun knitting this. Um, mostly I wanted the finished object. Oh, I just wish that this was up here and then I would feel feel happier, but oh my goodness. Okay, so that's my Stego sweater. I don't know if I if there's anything else I didn't mention. Um, I did, so the main needle was a US 5. I did go up to a US 6 for the color work um, and I'm really happy I did. I don't usually adjust that, but again, I, I checked my gauge the whole time I was going and I going up, I actually maintained my gauge that I had for like the stockinette portions in the US 5. So d using that trick, and for unfamiliar, if you're knitting color work, sometimes it can be helpful to go up one needle size from your main color to avoid things like puckering or having your color work be tighter than the rest of the sweater. So yeah, um, I was glad I did that in order to like maintain gauge. So that's my Stego sweater. It's amazing. Oh, the sleeves, I did mention I adjusted that. Um, and actually the yarn, so I, I I played yarn chicken with the sweater. I had, I didn't weigh, but maybe five grams of the mini, of the main color left. That was nerve wracking, knitting the sleeves and not being sure if I would be able to finish. I had plenty of the other color. This was a, this took five skeins of yarn or really four and a half. So I needed two of the contrast color and three of the main color. Um, so I did adjust the sleeves because my yoke depth, at that point I knew my yoke depth was quite long. So she has you 
knit so many rounds, then do your decrease, then knit so many rounds, do your decrease. And for this size, there was very few rounds of knitting before each decrease, so it was a lot of quick decreases, but I decided to go ahead and eliminate some of those knitted rounds and do my decreases closer together. So I have a lot fewer knitted rounds, and you can see the sleeve is perfectly long. It's it's just right. So um, I really just, I just guessed, and it worked out perfectly where I had enough yarn, and if I hadn't adjusted, I wouldn't have had enough yarn. So I was very glad that like I had that foresight to make that adjustment. Anyway, so I did remove some of the knitted, the knitted rows um, from each sleeve, and I won't give numbers or anything, but um, I had very few knitted rows. So a lot of, it was really kind of a rapid decrease, um, but it worked out just perfectly. And again, I knew that my yoke was really long, so I didn't need as much because the actual sleeve, it starts with the color work and then you've got like your stockinette and then some more color work and your cuff. Um, so I figured if I needed more length, I would make the cuff longer, but again, I didn't really have to. So that worked out. Yeah. So stay tuned for my version and attempt number two of my Sego sweater. Um, super excited to do that one. I kind of want to do like a whole rainbow palette of these. I love them. Um, I didn't even mention part of why I was so excited to knit this and it was such perfect timing. When I go on my Rhinebeck trip, I am all over the place today. We are driving, which is what we did last time, um, from Alabama to New York. It's a 16 hour drive. And last time my baby, you know, I, I didn't have a baby. So we were able to drive straight through um, with one stop for breakfast in Pennsylvania. This time, because I have my baby and we're traveling with my parents, um, we're going to actually make an overnight stop. So we're going to split up the drive. We're going to stop in a little bit outside of DC and we're going to go to the Natural History Smithsonian Museum to see the dinosaurs. That's a dream come true. I've never been there. I've never gotten to do that. So I can't believe I'm getting, this trip is like my dream trip. I'm so excited. Um, so I wanted to wear, I wanted to knit and wear a dinosaur sweater. Of course, it's like a Rhinebeck adjacent Rhinebeck, you know, adjacent Rhinebeck sweater. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and get on my second version and yeah, I'm going to knit my daughter the fossil frenzy tee to wear. That'll be fun. I am not looking forward to how much editing I'm going to have to do with this video. <laughs> This probably wasn't the best day to record, but I really had no choice. Let's talk about this one. And then we'll talk about my husband's sweater. I forgot that I hadn't shown these yet, even though the MCAL ended what feels like forever ago now, like a month ago. But these are the Stardew Valley, the spring comes alive, um, <laughs> the valley comes alive, spring socks by Kim, who is the designer of Oakwood Knits and yeah, um, these are like, this is a dream project. I, I found these on Ravelry a long time ago. They've been on my queue for a long time. And when she announced earlier this year that she would be doing a year long knit along for each of the seasons, I was like, well, I'm not going to pass that up. So yeah, these are my finished socks and they are insanely beautiful. So, um, I've already I think talked at length about what I think about this pattern and the designer. Um, but in case you haven't seen that, I, I just think that she's such a brilliant designer. The sun is really fighting me. I'll just hold them right here. Okay. <laughs> she's such a brilliant designer. Um, if you're familiar with Stardew Valley, this is like they were taken straight out of the game. Um, I just, I love them. They have the iconic spring crops. It's just perfect. So I'm so glad to have finished these. The yarn for these was um, Knit Picks Palette. And I mentioned, you know, we talked about it last time, but that is not considered a sock yarn. Um, but I wouldn't let that hold you back at all because I have knit before socks without nylon content. And um, like I said last time, the, the one pair of socks that I have that has held up the best out of all of my socks has no nylon content. It's actually a merino or a wool and linen blend and they are amazing and they've held up really well. So um, if you want to knit these and use the recommended yarns because the colors really are perfect the way that she picked them, 
yeah, don't don't let the no nylon hold you back, in my opinion. The first sock, the first sock, I kind of talked about having trouble with the clouds um, because there's really, really, really long floats. Um, and even though I was catching my floats and keeping things loose, I was still having trouble like getting it on after it was all said and done. So I had to go in and like cut some of the floats, some of the long ones, and tie them or um, sew them kind of into the fabric, which has not provided an issue so far. I've done that with other projects. Um, it seems to work for me as long as you make sure everything's really secure. And then for my second sock, Kim was really nice and suggested that I try the jacquard ladder back technique. Um, and so I, I was like learning about it and reading about it and watching videos and stuff. But what I ended up deciding to do was to, so when I, when I knit the first one, um, I didn't have the right needles on hand after the ribbing because you go up a needle size for the color work and I had to use DPNs. But DPNs with color work, especially in a small circumference, can be a little bit tricky for me for keeping like really good floats and color work tension. So eventually, when I realized I was us using the wrong needle size, I switched to a 9 inch circular, which is my preferred method for socks anyway, and the rest of the color work was a lot simpler um, and a lot stretchier. And so I kind of had a feeling if I knit the second sock with the 9 inch circulars the whole way that it would come out um, nice and stretchy, and it did. So that solved the issue for me. I made sure to really try it on as I went that time just to be sure that I was I wouldn't regret or have to cut again um, my floats so yeah I just did the nine inch circular and it made the second one just perfect um yeah that's all that I can say I have cast on the summer ones which I'll talk about in my works in progress this is for my husband this is a gift this is the unbearable hoodie by Max the Knitter Le Garcon and it's beautiful. I'm so glad to have knit this. I think I had just kind of finished the yoke last time I was here. Um, I've been wanting to make this for a long time. I want to make one for myself eventually, but I really wanted to make him a gift. So now he has a Rhinebeck sweater. Um, I think it came out beautifully. It's all blocked and everything. I just have a few more ends to weave in, which I was working on yesterday. Um, I think I got the sleeves maybe done. No, there's a, there's a couple of ends, but otherwise it's completely done and blocked and really beautiful. So the yarns are, um, the main color is from Two Roots Alpaca Farm, which is located in Tennessee. I picked up this yarn when I did the show in Townsend back in April, um, but it's an alpaca yarn with these really beautiful bright uh, silk nips. So up close, it's really fun and pretty, um, but far away, you can't really see them. So it kind of has this really fun multicolor look to it but um yeah it's not like hyper feminine or anything even though there's bright pink because you really can't see it from far away and then the white was also from two roots farm and this was a, an undyed blend of doc and freebird which are two of their herd sires i think that was i think that was an alpaca and a sheep maybe a merino sheep but it's really pretty it's very like um, it's soft, but it has like a rustic look to it. And then the the gold color is one of my hand dyed yarns. This is called um, Tea with Honey, and it's a superwash for Reno. And uh, this is all a DK weight um, project. So yeah, it's so cute. These bears have little hats on. Hopefully you can see those little hats. <laughs> and there's flowers. Um, I just love this. I'm calling this the Papa Unbearable. Um, and I'm going to make a mama one and a baby one too. So my family, we can have matching <laughs> bear hoodies. Um, I knit the size two, I think. My husband is a very tall, long man, but he's very slender. So, um, I knew I needed like a smaller circumference and that I could just adjust length of the body and the sleeves, which I did. Because again, he has like the longest arms known to man. This is... This doesn't maybe look like much, but when it's on, it's it's super long. Um, I thought maybe that I would be able to steal this from him and that it would be cute and I could wear it with leggings or something. And unfortunately, it is really not cute on me, so I won't be able to share this with him. Um, I'm sure he doesn't. He's not 
upset about that. But yeah, so that's unbearable. I don't really have too many things to say about it. It's not for me, so I won't really be trying it on because again, it doesn't look cute, but I'll insert a photo of him wearing it because it looks fantastic. I was really proud of the way that I got this to fit him. You know, knitting something for somebody else and their body can be, can be a little bit tricky when you've knit so many garments for yourself and you're so used to your own needs and all of that. But yeah, that's my unbearable hoodie. I think I need to move on a little faster. So let's talk about my works in progress. I'm going to start with a really fun project. I'm calling this my Barbie sweater because the Barbie movie is coming out actually this month, July. And I really wanted to have a fun outfit to wear to the movie. I thought about doing a full Barbie cosplay, which sounds crazy. I wanted to do like an 80s Barbie cosplay and I had found the perfect one, but um, I kind of only wanted to do that if I could guarantee that I had a group of friends who would do it with me. And um, I have had people say that they're interested, but nobody's committed. So I didn't want to go all in and then have to go by myself in a full outfit. So I thought I would do something kind of cosplay adjacent. So I'm making a modified Soldotna, Soldotna crop. Um, if you've seen on Instagram, Knitting Ruined My Life, that's a designer. She had put out a call, a test knit call for a Barbie crop. Um, and it was, it was funny because a lot of people sent it to me and they were like, you wanted a Barbie sweater, here you go. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't get picked for the test knit, um, which is fine. I had two test knits going on already. I just wanted that for the theme and the, I love doing test knits for the camaraderie <laughs> with the other testers. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I got to do this instead because the Barbie crop is probably not something that I realistically would have worn after the movie. This is something I'll wear all the time. So <laughs> yeah, it's very bold. Um, the only thing Barbie about it is just that it's a bright Barbie pink. I've almost finished the first sleeve. I, oh, I also sewed a Barbie project bag. I will have a few of these in my shop, but my sewing time has been very few and far between, but I'm planning on putting these bags out soon. So I'll talk about like a shop update plan soon um, at the end of this episode. But so I made myself a large Barbie project bag. There's Barbie fabric on the inside too. And it just goes, the whole, the whole bag is pink and Barbie. Um, so my yarns, this is a combination of my hand dyed yarns and then some yarns that I carry in my shop. My main color, if you will, is this neon pink and this is called Come On Barbie. And this is one of my yarns, paper crane yarns. And then one of my contrasts uh, for the color work is Let's Go Party, which is the companion to this one, Come On Barbie, Let's Go Party. <laughs> um, so I, I knew I needed these. And I do have some of these available on my website if you would like to purchase and make yourself one. Um, and then this is Wool Dreamers. This is their, this is Spanish Merino. Uh, de de I have, so I can speak Spanish, but I have a lisp that makes rolling my R's really hard. <laughs> so I have a hard time with this word. De de barrera, barrera. Wool Dreamers Spanish Merino. <laughs> and I was thinking that this colorway was Botella Verde, but I actually think that's the dark green. So I don't remember what this is, but I'll have it linked below. Um, I really love working with this yarn. I'm so happy to be carrying it in my shop. I also have the Wool Dreamers uh, Manchalopi. And yeah, I love both of these. So I'm gonna be ordering more of this soon. So that is my third color. And then I'm just using the Sadness Garn Double Sunday in the black. So that's my palette. Um, I really love it. It's super fun. So when I finished the body, I, so I'm, I'm making the size two and I, I was debating between the size two and three. I could have gone either way, but I really wanted this to be like more of a cropped kind of a closer fitting sweater. I knit the size one the first time, I think the size one, the first time I did the Soldotna and, um, but I kept that one like a short sleeve version. So it, I don't wear it because there's an issue with the color work. Um, it's my first ever color work project but it's, it's cute. I liked the fit of it, but I thought since this would have long sleeves, I wanted to go up a size. Um, so 
here we are. And you can see I, so for the body color work, I did the Wool Dreamers and my Let's Go Party colorway. And then for the sleeves, I thought it would be fun to do like a high contrast difference from the body. So each of the sleeves, I'm doing the black and the Let's Go Party colorway. So um, if you're familiar with this pattern, it is a short sleeve cropped t-shirt style pattern with like a flared hem. Um, so it's really cute. I'm modifying it by adding long sleeves. And I simply did that by uh, when I picked up for the sleeves, I just added four additional stitches um, to give it a little bit more room. And then I just took the body color work pattern and I'm knitting it on the sleeve. Um, it's the easiest color work pattern to memorize. I, I almost feel like it hardly counts as color work because um, there's no floats to catch or anything. You just kind of have to remember which row you're on. Again, super simple. And I'm just doing zero decreases down the whole sleeve. So it's a little bit more fitted up at the top and then there'll be a little bit of room here and then I'll do a rapid decrease right before the cuff. So I'll probably do like a knit two together all the way around and then have like a cute kind of somewhat balloon style sleeve. And then I'm deciding on if I will do the cuff. I think I'll do it in the yellow green kind of color since I used the black in the color work. Um, but we'll see. So yeah, I'm excited. This will be done probably this week. Um, I had to take a couple days off of knitting um or I couldn't do as much knitting because I injured myself with a knitting needle I actually poked a hole into my finger it's very painful with a knitting needle it just went straight into my finger I couldn't believe it so I guess I had kind of worn down that spot of my skin probably and so I kept trying to knit after that and it kept I would try to like angle my finger so it wouldn't go in but if I would stop thinking about it I would poke myself again. So it's finally healed over. I think I can knit now with no consequence. But yeah, that was not fun. So now I should be able to finish this no problem. And I'm hoping my best friend and I will get to go see the movie together. I also, I used a, like a second hand. I buy my clothing um, second hand. And I got these insanely, I'll put up a picture, these insanely cute boots to wear with this. Or they're really heels. But um, they are just a little bit too small on one of my feet. And so I have a feeling I won't be able to walk in them and I don't want to fall on my face. <laughs> I'll probably not be able to wear them, but that was my plan. Anyway, that's my favorite work in progress currently. I love this one. <laughs> so my next work in progress that I will talk about is in this project bag that I made myself, um, a month or two ago, probably two months. It's a quilted project bag with a lot of, um, scrap fabrics. This is one of my favorites. Um, if you listen to the Yarniacs podcast, which is Gail and Charlene, they've been doing the podcast for many years. I think like 10 years. They have a long, um, they have a lot of back episodes for you to listen to if, if you've never done so. I love listening to them. Um, I think they record every two weeks, but they're an audio podcast, but they have the most amazing Ravelry community. I have never seen such an active community. They're also supportive and they respect. People just respond to you right away. It's amazing. There's there's a lot, um, a lot of like community around that podcast. So I recommend checking them out. But every year they do something called the Colors of Fall Knit Along, and the premise is that you are knitting in the summertime. The cast on day is the um, summer solstice, which this year was June twenty first. Um, the idea is that you're taking the Pantone fall color palettes for the year. Um, and you can use either the New York or the London or, you know, some people it's spring for them right now. Um, so you could use the, or it will be spring when it's fall for us. So you could use the spring um, palettes if you want. But regardless, you're just kind of using the Pantone color palettes for the year. You're picking a color and you're making any project. Um, so I'm super excited to be working with mine. I cast on June 21st. I am making the Diaphanous Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs, and my yarn is, I showed this last time because I had just bought it, but this is Yarnaceous Fibers, again my favorite dyer, and this was one of her new um, colorways, one of her new gemstones, but this is the Vesuvian colorway. Um, so I have the salt, her salt of fingering base, two skeins of that, which is just a sock yarn, 7525 Merino Nylon. 
And then this is like the star of the show. This is her new Cosmo Cash Lace, which is an 82% fine merino wool and 18% cashmere. It's 316 yards to 50 grams. So this is like a, a lace weight, kind of like Surrey or mohair, but it's much different. And it doesn't have a single, there's not been a single flyaway like you kind of get with mohair. And I love mohair and mohair would have been beautiful for this project, but this is what I picked because I wanted to try the base. Um, the cashmere, it's like this brushed cashmere. It is incredibly soft. And if you are somebody who can't use mohair or surrey, you might want to consider trying this one because again, there's none of those irritating like flyaway fibers. So you might find that this is something that works for you. So this is knit with um, like an intarsia technique when you're doing the sleeve cap. So you have three active balls of yarn and you're kind of having to do management of, of the yarn while you're knitting it um, because you've got these sections where you're holding the two yarns double and then in the center you're just holding the lace weight because you're going to have so there's different options for this pattern but I'm going to do the long sleeve like balloon style of, of this sweater hopefully I'll put up a picture and um, and then you pick up two strands again so you're dropping one of the fingering weight strands at each section or when, when you come to the just the lace weight portion and then you pick up the next one when you get over here and you're doing your raglan increases the whole time too so there's going to be raglan shaping um so you knit each sleeve cap independently it's very simple that might sound complicated it's it's very very simple um so this will be one side and then i have to do the other side and then there's a v-neck so you're working on that and then eventually, once both sides are done, you'll be joining in the round and knitting in the round. Or joining and, and knitting in the round. Um, and then you knit your beautiful sleeves. So this has been a fun project. Um, I did knit the first sleeve cap most of the way. And then I realized that I was supposed to be increasing in the center panel. Um, I was not increasing. I just had the same number of stitches down. So it was one like vertical column with no increases. And I thought like this was getting really long with not nearly enough stitches. And then I read the pattern again and realized, wow, I missed an entire set of instructions for the increases. So I ripped it all out and started it over. And this only took a day. So it, it wasn't that bad. Um, I need to go ahead and just do the second one. But that's my Colors of Fall Knit Along entry. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely not too late. The, the Knit Along just started a week ago, so you should take a look at the color palette. Um, I'm doing the Rose Violet colorway, although I think this is maybe a little bit more purple than the Rose Violet um, colorway, the Pantone color, um, but I'm going to say that this is close enough to Rose Violet. So also on the 21st, there's not much to show, but I just wanted to show that I am working on it. I'm doing the summer socks for the Stardew Valley like year-long knit along. Um, I've started on the summer socks. I just did the cup on the first day because I cast on the two projects, the Diaphanous Raglan and this one. Um, plus I want to do my Soldatna and I have the two test knits still. So I have had more whips going on in June than I have had like pretty much ever. Um, and I'm, I'm embracing that. I want to cast on a lot of stuff and I, I think that's okay. So <laughs> I've started the summer. That's all I have so far, just the ribbing. I've just done one row of the color work chart now, but I am using my prismatic shard um, stitch marker. That is by Nerdy Knits. It's giving me a hard time. But this is from Stardew Valley. So I have a theme. Goodness gracious. There's a, a right side and a wrong side. I'm trying to show you the right side. You get the idea. So yeah, I, I'm going to be picking this one up soon and making a lot of progress. I'm very excited about that one. So update you on another project. I think this might be the last work in progress that I have to show um, that I've really put work into. I do have a pair of socks, but I, I won't I won't show those today. They're just vanilla self-striping socks. I showed the, I'm on the second sock. So if you've watched my podcast before, you've seen the other sock. I'll show it when they're done. But I am also knitting a sleeveless cabled vest for my dad who requested one um, in a mossy green kind of color. So I have actually made a lot of progress on this now. Um, he wants this for October, so I figured I would go ahead and really try to make some progress on it. 
Um, this is going to be the part that takes the longest, I think. So I'm, I'm almost done with it. Um, but this is the, I did this last time. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's Man's Best Vest by Maddie Lane Crafts. Um, again, all the information is below. I'm knitting this out of the Cascade Sport yarn. So it's just 100% wool. It's a non-super wash. It's nice and um, rustic and, and just lovely. And it's a very, very simple cable pattern. Um, I think it's going to block out beautifully, but there's columns of the cable and columns of stockinette. There's twisted rib at the hem, and this is pieced. So I'm just knitting the back right now. I've started on the sleeve, the armhole shaping. So I've started with that. I, there it goes. Yeah, so if you can picture, that is where the sleeve is starting to shape. Um, I just have to knit maybe one more inch here, and then I'll do the shaping for the neckline. And then I'll have to knit the front panels and attach everything. But yeah, this is going really, really well. So I'm just glad that I'll have this done for him on time. Um, I'm trying to prioritize it, but there's so many things I want to knit. So I'm doing all of it right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I just started my third skein of this. Um, I still have quite a few left, so I should have more than enough for the project. There's only three sizes to the pattern unfortunately, but I do think it was published in like a magazine. And so it's, it's a very, it's only a two page pattern. Um, it's definitely not a beginner friendly pattern in the sense that it doesn't hold your hand. Um, it doesn't really give, now it's a great pattern, but there's no like helpful links to anything. Or if you're learning how to knit, I would not recommend starting with this pattern, but maybe once you've done a couple of, of garments, then and you have an understanding of, of shaping and stuff, you'll have no problem with this. But yeah, that is my dad's um, cabled sleeveless vest project. And that is in my Fat Squirrel Fibers project bag that I absolutely love. My little friends wearing mushroom hats. I think that's all I'm gonna show of active knitting <laughs> today. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the stuff that I've been purchasing recently knit wise. Um, although these are not technically knitting, but this ceramicist, Kata Ceramics, you've probably heard of her. She's really awesome. She makes super cool yarn bowls. So she's got cows and axolotls and cats and pandas and stuff. Um, she just recently went to being a full-time ceramicist, which is cool. So now she will be doing bigger and more frequent updates, I think. Her pieces were really hard to get. Um, I don't know how, but I managed to get one piece from each of her previous two updates. And then yesterday she had an update and I bought one more, but I'm done. That's all of my pieces. I'm not getting any more. Everybody else can have them. I've been buying like the discounted pieces. So the pieces that have cracks and stuff in them, my husband is a potter and I, I don't know. I really like the stuff that is kind of has some character. Um, you know, it doesn't change the function of the item. It's just like, well, I'll show you my other one. So this was the first one I got and um, this is the thing I most truly wanted um, more than like a yarn bowl or anything. I just wanted this cow mug. I've, I've always liked cow mugs. I've had a collection my whole life. This is hands down my favorite. Super cute. Um, and then I got the strawberry milk cow pacino. Cow pacino. Cow, cow pacino. Wow, my brain is not not doing well with that. Um, it's a little mug and this one's imperfect. It's an oval shape and there's a scratch like on the lip. You probably can't even see it. I can hardly tell that it's imperfect. You can kind of see the shape, but anyway, so that's going to be nice for like a little, um, espresso shot. But really what I have in mind is when my daughter gets older, I think she's going to love this. So I'm looking forward to sharing drinks with her, having a little tea party. Um, and yesterday I ordered a strawberry milk cow yarn bowl um again with imperfections which is really fun so again that'll be my last piece but i'm excited about those so i i did get some yarnaceous fibers um i've said before i'm subscribed to her monthly paleo botany club and this was the newest color so i guess this is june and this one is called b-a-n-k-s-i-a so i'm not familiar with that banksia banksia Banksha? I don't know. I, I love to look up when she sends these 
the the theme behind the paleo botany is definitely part of the fun so i i haven't had a chance to look that up yet but i love this one it's there's a lot of purple and orange and black and speckles so that's june's um colorway and i also purchased because she was having a sale two of her gemstone colorways for an Olga Putano sweater I'll be casting on soon. I think it's called the Mango Lid pullover and it's, so I'm going to dye the main color out. It's going to be like a light pink and then these will be the color work. I'm just copying Olga's color palette because it's perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> There's so much yarn. I almost sneezed, but I didn't. Okay. So this will be for my color work sweater that I'll be casting on very soon. So many months ago, Stressnitz, a uh, Stressnitz, Stacy, she was, uh, she finally had a, a shop update. It's been a while. I've not actually ever purchased from her before. She was talking about taking a break from dyeing. And so she said it would be like her last update for a while. Um, and I didn't want to miss out. So I, I thought I would never really have a chance to use her yarn or to really see it in person. So I thought this will be my chance. So I placed an order with her. Um, again, this was, this was months ago, so I, I didn't buy this anytime recently, but, um, I did have to wait for a little while for it to arrive, which is no problem. It's not like I don't have plenty of yarn to knit with already, <laughs> but when it showed up, I was so pleased, very happy. Um, I have plans for it. So I got two colorways. Um, the yarn went very fast. This wasn't necessarily what I was planning on buying, but that's no problem. I don't have anything like this, so I'm glad to have gotten these. But this is Stress Knits. This is her favorite base. This is the Eucalyptus colorway. So I got two skeins of this. This is an 80-20 um, merino nylon. And then I got two of her Surrey. She calls this Cloud, but it's a Surrey alpaca and silk base. And this is her Mountain Mama colorway. They're very similar, but you can definitely see that this one has more of like a minty kind of color to it. And this one is a bit deeper, but I'm gonna hold these together and I'm probably going to make another love note. <laughs> Um, because it's not really enough yardage to do much else since I only have the two skeins of the fingering and having knit the love note before, I know that this is like more than enough yarn to make that sweater. And, um, my other love note, which I knit from lambstrings held with my hand dyed yarn, that's my most worn sweater or was for a very long time. That one's like a reddish black color. So I figured, um, cause it needs to be cleaned up, but it's starting to look like I've worn it many times. So I figured it was time for another one. So I'm gonna make this one. So that's my Stress Knits yarn. I love these, they're really beautiful. I'm I'm glad to not have missed out. And it, you don't have to miss out either because it looks like she's still dying. I don't know if her circumstances changed, but it's really awesome that she's getting to keep dying. I don't wanna play favorites here, but I think my favorite thing, I don't wanna play favorites, but I think my favorite thing <laughs> I finally got to shop a cat sandwich fibers update, which is just so exciting. I thought about shopping her last update, but she didn't have the colorway that I wanted on the base that I wanted. I think she just had like a Stellina base for this, if I remember correctly, which is not what I wanted. So I just decided to hold out and I'm glad I did because um, this is the sweet and spookier colorway. And this is on her trusty base, which is a 7525 merino nylon without the selena and i really really love this i don't know how as a dyer i i don't know how she gets her speckles this consistently fine every single time there's certain dyes and maybe this is the case for her i don't know um there's certain dyes that speckle finely like this more easily than others so i don't know if she's just using those specifically but she seems to be putting she seems to put a lot more of like pH balance and kind of she I, I don't know she she's really mindful about the dyeing process in in that way anyway that's sweet and spookier beautiful <laughs> I am thinking about making a puntia which is another Hohi Locatelli um, pullover pattern and it features uh, like lace at the hem of the sweater and at the cuff it's really very feminine and, and pretty so I'm thinking about that, but I'm not quite sure. So um, I, I got a sweater's quantity, we'll figure it out. And then I got single skeins of two of her other colorways because I have a shawl planned. It's called Alvor by Unwind Knitwear. It's a brio shawl. And I'm thinking about 
using these for that with a third color from my stash or from my yarn. So I got one, and these are both also on the trusty base. This one is called Pink Pineapple, and it's very, very beautiful. It's a lot like Sweet and Spookier, but it's like a pink skein with pink speckles, whereas the other one was more orange. Did I show that one up close? I don't actually know if I really showed this up close. This is Sweet and Spookier. This has been on my dream yarn list for a long time. And so that was Pink Pineapple. And then I also got Strawberry Glaze. This one has more of a lilac color. So this is like a peachy pink, and this is like a lilac, purple, and lavender pink. Cat sandwich fibers. I just have two more things to show you. So when I, um, June 10th was Worldwide Knit and Public Day, I, um, I vended at a local event at a library, um, and there was another yarn dyer there, Sherwood Fiber Arts, so dyes fiber. So I bought this braid. Um, this is called Antique Mauve, again from Sherwood Fiber Arts, but this is 100% bamboo lay. This is four ounces. So I'm super excited um, because I also bought a spinning wheel. <laughs> um, I'm waiting on that to come. You know, there's production times. These are like small businesses that produce these wheels. So I got a ladybug. I think it's called Shocked. S-C-H-A-C-T. Shocked. Shot. I'm not sure. But it's the ladybug. And um, it's been two weeks, I think, since I ordered it. Their estimated time is four to six weeks for it to be built and uh, for it to arrive. I have heard that it takes a little bit longer right now because the demand is higher something like that. So it might take longer, which is no problem, but I'm very excited. Um, I have some other fiber in my stash from Rhinebeck a couple of years ago when I had um, purchased a drop spindle, which as it turns out is really not my favorite way to spin, but I have, I have used a wheel. <laughs> I had a little a mini adventure with buying a wheel, uh, a 1980s wheel that unfortunately is more of a decorative piece, but I did get to try my hand and I absolutely love it. So I'm super excited to get my wheel and to start spinning. So I have this one to look forward to. And lastly, I bought a book that I have very much been wanting. This is Only Yoking by Olga Putano, um, who I've already mentioned like five times in this episode. She's one of my most favorite designers. She's a brilliant color work designer. And I knew I would get this book at some point. Um, it's just full of the most beautiful yoke centric patterns. That's actually, I think, I think that's the first one I'm planning on knitting. Um, so there's different, there's like, I think maybe five, four or five sweaters per weight of yarn. So there's fingering weight, there's DK weight options. So I'm going to try not to show you the proprietary details there. Um, she's got a couple different models in here. It's just a really beautiful, a really beautiful book. Lots of beautiful photography. It's very inspiring. <sighs> yeah, I'm so excited to finally have this book. Um, one of my other friends who regularly comes to my knit group, she also got this book. So um, whereas I've done a couple of sweater <laughs> knit alongs essentially with my friend Tammy, I'm hoping to also get to knit a sweater with my friend Cheryl. So maybe we can pick a sweater to do together. But there's, so this is not just color work, although that's what, made me want to buy it. This is the Josie pattern. I'm definitely going to make this one first, but there's also textured yokes too. There's a couple of textured yoke patterns in here. Um, so I will try some of those. And if that's your thing, like this one, it's probably the yarn color that intrigues me trying to, yeah, there's a couple of textured yokes in here too. I've been wanting to carry this in the shop, but I haven't been able to figure out how. I'll figure it out. Okay. Let's see. I don't actually have time for any kind of chatting. Um, I am planning a shop update. I'm doing a Spirited Away uh, sock set collection. I've already dyed three out of the five colorways that I'm planning. Um, I'm going to shoot for the second Saturday of July or not the second Saturday, the second full week. So that might be the third Saturday since today is the first and today's Saturday. So I would guess 
two Saturdays from now. I'll have the date on the screen. <laughs> That's when I plan on having my Spirited Away update, if you've been following for that. Um, yeah, I, I, I really sincerely hope to do another video before that comes out because I don't have time to show that stuff today. Um, so you have maybe that to look forward to if that's your thing. I've been having a lot of fun with it. I think it's turning out really well because I'm actually putting planning into it and I'm writing down my recipes. <laughs> um, other news, my, my building expansion is almost done. I can't believe it. I think it's beautiful. Um, in a couple of days, I'll be placing my big order, my big expensive order for all of my new displays, my fixtures. Um, so the room I'm in currently, this will continue to be my storefront, but then behind me, this wall is going to disappear and open up into the next unit. We're taking over and we're almost done renovating. So now I get to do the fun stuff like decorating it and filling it with yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what else? We have lots of new products in the shop if you're interested. I have the Knitting the National Parks book that's been super popular by Nancy Bates. Um, I've got quite a few of those. I have the Knitting with Disney Tannis Gray book. I've got a couple of the Star Wars Knitting the Galaxy books. Um, I have more, I have new Della Q bags. I've got the orange um, train case that's inspired by Gigi Made It. And on the way, I have some of their new mesh tote bags. So those will be on my website soon. I've got lots of twice shared sheep. I have some sock rulers left from twice shared sheep. Um, I had the sock week color, the nitty natty sock week color, but I think they mostly sold out. I might have one left or they might all be gone, but I have some of the other new spring and summer colors like pink and there's like a minty blue. Um, I think the lavender is all sold, but so I've got some of those on my website. I have some cross stitch kits. Um, yeah, I have got the Wool Dreamers Manchalopi, which is beautiful. It's an, that's the unspun but two-ply um, Manchiga sheep wool. Um, yeah, I don't have time for any kind of chatting otherwise. Oh. I do have to show you guys this. I've been meaning to show you this for a long time. I ordered this months ago and have not shown it yet. Um, I did a gnome mini skein collection and project bag update months and months ago like six months ago. And my husband did some custom art for my labels. And I finally um, remembered to bring this. I, I had the art printed on some hoodies for us. So it says paper crane yarns up here. And then I've got the image screen printed. It's cut off a little bit, but it's screen, screen printed on this hoodie. This one's mine. On the back, it has my shop details and my logo and it's in pink and his is white on the back. But yeah, so I'm thinking about offering these in my shop if anybody would be interested. Um, not just hoodies, but maybe like t-shirts and tank tops or tote bags. But yeah, are, would you be interested in this? Let me know because I'm, I'm not sure. I love it. <laughs> He's an amazing illustrator. I love the gnome and the mushrooms that he did for me. And of course incorporated my crane. Okay. I hope everybody has, is having an amazing summer. Um... I hope I'll get to see some of you soon at my shop or on Zoom. I'm finally going to set up a Zoom event. Maybe I'll have that planned and I can put those details here or below. I don't know. But thank you so much for watching. Um, please take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done so. It really helps my channel, but mostly my business to grow. And I love building a community. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do those things. I will talk to you next time. Bye.